outlook of markets and profile from the team here at tradetheprofile.com and our profile trading development pathway. This is for the week of July 11th, 2021. As always, be mindful of the risk as you participate in markets, knowing that one of the very few things that you can control is yourself, how you apply risk and where you apply that risk. Be mindful of that as you approach each day. Now, as, as is often the case, we begin with a calendar. Just to look and see if there are any potential catalysts to pay attention to as we come to the week. This last week, we were looking around at FOMC minutes. That was kind of a dud. Not a lot moving there. That explains some of the ramp later in the week. This upcoming week, we've got a 10-year note auction. That's something to eyeball on Monday. And then we've got a bunch of Chinese data that's going to roll out Wednesday into Thursday. Thursday, specifically, we've got a, a number of jobless claims, manufacturing index, all hitting at that 8.30 Eastern to be mindful of. And then we got retail sales as well. Always mark those references if you're trading U.S. equities. The bigger story this week is going to be earnings. We have bank earnings that are going to start this week. And with respect to earnings, I want to look at this chart, which is just the sectors overlaid on top of the SPY to get a sense over the last quarter, who has been driving this market. And we've got real estate, we've got healthcare, energy, tech, obviously, have been the leading growing sectors. All the others are below that. Financials are essentially the, the leader of the laggards. And that will be something that we'll watch and see as the earnings come out in the banks this coming week. Fixed term structure looks similar to treasury structure as well. There's different durations of VIX, just like there's different direction, durations of bonds, notes, and so forth. And we look at the shape of this curve to get an idea of how the auction is pricing in specifically risk. And from the beginning of the year, we've been in a move to complacency mode. So when you see these expirations get wider, that's a measurement of complacency. As they're widening and fanning out, you get higher equity prices. When they get too wide, then they come back and we get a little bit of a liquidation event. As you'll see when we look at the S&P later here, the liquidation event that we had was more to do with the complacency in the auction than just about anything else. As we look at the VIX futures here, we see also a spike in the VIX futures in the middle of the week, but really right back to this key high volume node before rolling over towards the end of the week and closing near the weekly lows. As we look at the US dollar as another inside metric to see kind of where things have been and where they are, it was a rotational balancing week. We're still inside the highs of the year, well above the most traded price of the year and holding the spike that started on FOMC. So that is staying there. The only thing that you have to think about with the higher dollar, we mentioned this last week, is that higher dollar will ultimately impact multinational earnings. So your Apples, Amazons, Microsoft, Googles, and so forth, it could impact that. Look for that potentially when they start talking about their earnings falls. Okay, let's look at the S&P. And it was another strong week out of an area of balance. We had several weeks of balance, and now we're breaking out of that. Started with the close above that, one time frame higher. We had 42.84 last week as a key reference. We go back and look at the quick sheet. We see 42.87 last week was this key reference. That was the five day. That was the key pivot. And we had closed significantly above that. And we've talked about the potential for us to come back to that price. A couple of ways to think about those references, especially if it's lower and you close on the high. If you move higher in the week, you look for that to be a target later. If you move, if you don't really make higher and you move lower, that's a place to buy. That was an effective place to buy this week that ultimately led you to push towards the close on the highs. Now, we, we closed on the highs and that had more to do with the fact that as any risk associated with FOMC minutes was taken out of the market, then what ends up happening is that the dealers who had short contracts to offset risk, if we broke specifically below 4284, they no longer need that short exposure. And so they buy back. That's why we started to gap higher in the week. When we go look at the shorter time frame chart, when we look inside the profile, as it were, we can see that today's profile actually doesn't start until up here. We hit, we started with a little bit of a gap, gap rules in play. The move started overnight above a key high volume node and just kept rolling. All this, th anytime you see a move like this on a Friday after an event, 
you know, they couldn't get any follow through on Thursday below this key node, which was the prior week pivot. Then they got to buy the futures back to offset the puts sold. And we rock and roll higher. This is just a function of what's happening in the S&P at the moment. Now on to the NASDAQ, similar story of just one time framing every week higher, one time framing every week higher. Now, when we closed last week, we talked about this key node that was a reference for us. We'll go look at that specifically on the profile. We had 550 as a key reference. Note that we came back and tested right in the neighborhood of 550, similar to the S&P and bounced. And that came after higher prices. We started with higher prices in the week, came back, tested that, bounced. That again becomes a key reference. When we look at the references for this week, that 550 is still there on the 20 day, but now 810 is a key reference to the upside. So 810 smack dab is the key pivot. We'll see if that leads to another week higher or lower. We're still waiting for some type of end to this one time framing higher auction. We know that the profile and the composite is getting thin. What will, you know, the behavior that we're looking for when we're in a move phase like this is we're looking for something that makes us a lower low for a week, shuts off this auction and starts us starting to trade sideways. We haven't quite seen that just yet. Although when we look at the intraday chart, we do actually have a bit of a balancing range here from that key pivot last week. You can see how they tested that and pushed off of it. We'll have a new pivot this week around this 810. That's gonna be a key level above or below. Below we can start working back towards some of these other references and see if we could actually start developing a balancing range to shut off this auction. Typically, when you get a liquidation day like this, that would mean that this high would be something that we would put in. We at least have the bottom side of the range. We're looking for the top side. We have some selling excess up here. That's the expectation going into this week is that that's going to hold and that we'll get some balancing as we get head into earnings. Russell, very much in balance. Not a lot to say here. We still are just keep, keep moving back and forth across the most traded price of the year. We keep defending a bracket low. We really kind of this 2200, 2250 area continues to define the playground. We once again tested the year to date VWAP, found buyers, came right back to the middle. And that's really the story going in this next week is it's going to be kind of from the middle towards the extremes. And then if we get to the extremes, we'll look for reversion back in one way or the other. This is going to be the story until we could actually close outside of this bracket. And it could continue for quite some time. When we look at the specific prices, you got 2274, 2308, and 2260 as the key references in the Russell. And as you can see, just across a lot of the sectors, very balanced. This week, especially as we lead in earnings, that's, you know, in terms of expectations for the coming week, that's, I think it's one to think about is that, that the auction is likely going to lose some directional conviction in earnings, get a little bit higher as some of those big tech names kind of rally into their earnings. But by and large, most of the equity complex I'm expecting to move somewhat sideways. A couple of the markets that I want to look at, you know, if you get frustrated, I see lots of comments on things like Twitter and, and so forth, where people complain about the S&P, or they complain about Fed intervention. Well, hey, you know, there's other markets out there to trade that we can trade as futures traders that, you know, are accessible to us through different exchanges that don't have all-star stocks. They don't have central banks who are using these products as pension replacements. And one of the reasons the stocks only go up is because, we have decided that things like equities are pension replacements. So 401ks, IRAs, and so forth, encourage people to invest in these products. Of course, you want them to go up. That's why there's an incentive for the Fed to back that up. There are other countries that don't have that scenario set up. They have more you know, social safety nets, so they're not using that in their equity markets. Their equity markets are really a place to hedge risk, to find opportunity. So they're far more volatile, more attractive. One of them here is the DAX, which I would liken that to the Dow. And, or the NASDAQ in terms of its volatility and flow, you can see very balanced market, lots of two-sided trade taking place in this market as we develop around this high volume node. Another one to take a look at, you can, on the SGX, the Singapore, Singapore exchange is the Chinese A50. This one also trades like the, the, the NASDAQ approaching its yearly lows. Lots of good volatility. If you like the short side, this is an index that you can trade. Gives you an index type exposure 
but gives you some good two-sided trade. Another one out there is the Nifty in India. Also about five day, five weeks of balance, looking for some type of larger move out of here. Uh, to the upside, you know, you can you can measure 945 to 504. So you're looking at about a 400 point move that's coming one way or the other. To the downside, if we get into this low volume node, then that starts moving the Nifty back this way. You know, from the upside, if you look at uh, five eight, we're looking for 16200 to the upside. Okay, lots of great opportunity if you want two side trade in these other index products. Now back to products that we typically talk about. Uh, the next one is the treasuries and they closed in balance with the five day, put in new selling excess after they challenged this prior selling excess at this high volume node. Now note, as we pull, pull this out, uh, that we came back and have tested the top of this prior high volume node. That's gonna be a key reference to see if that holds and allows them to push higher up towards the next node, or do they break below that? If they do, we can lean against this excess and look for the rotations back again towards the most traded node of the year. So good opportunity there in the bonds, especially if they can break below Friday's low, look for an opportunity for you know really short-term rallies and then get your risk on to go to the downside. Gold, gold is still maintaining a somewhat bullish posture and equal to the five day, which is at 1806, 1778 to the downside. When we go look at the chart here, so here's that 1776. Again, we talked about this last week, how they pushed below and came back and closed here. And if they can get above that, then that's, let's go. And that's what we got early in the week. They sustained above that. That's now the key defense. I like gold to keep moving higher. Next top target, is, even in this week, is up, up towards the 1844 area, especially if they can hold above 1806. That'll be the key pivot. Okay, now we're on to crude. Crude continues in a larger trend. So we can see this large trend that we're in here as we move higher. However, also note the key composite node right here. We've got this key composite node at 7354 that we've been trading back and forth across this week. Crude is putting in a top, it is balancing. So after the move that we had, we're now in a balancing environment. What does that mean? That means as we approach the highs, mean reversion trades will work. If we approach the lows, mean reversion trades, we're looking to work. Got to defend this excess. So if they break this, the downside, you got to be mindful because that can open the door back to these high volume nodes. But if we you know, move down here and reject back in, that's an opportunity. Look at the key references, 7456, 7337, those key references, pivots for the week. You can see we closed right on the five day essentially, but within one ATR of the 20 day. So we're basically in balance reference. Could be choppy in the middle, get outside the edges and look to fade back. If I was looking for something to hold, I like the opportunity if I can get up here towards 76.98, looking for shorts that would first target back to the mean inversion and maybe slip and get going. So watch for those early rallies this week for some potential opportunity to get in. Good selling excess this last week, engulfing week, opens the downside, but let's see if we can get some higher prices first, shall we? We do have one other thing about crude this week was we do have micro crude futures about to come out. They're a tenth the size, just like all the other micro products. This is gonna make crude a far more attractive vehicle for a lot of traders and one that we will talk increasingly about with our team. Soybeans continuing with our theme this last week that we have a bottom, good buying excess. Now notice the gap down in the inside week this last week, a lot of volatility. That's pretty typical for this time of year in grains. So it's kind of, the grains are kind of like the weather. If you don't like the weather, or you don't like the price, just wait five minutes, it'll change. Uh, inside week, but still in above last week's low, below last week's high, balancing, looking for beans to break one way or the other, either for a retest of these lows or a push up here to 1420. They can get above 1420, then they can go to 1468. Okay, let's talk about Bitcoin, who continues to hold this larger bracketing balance area. Now, so far we have held this bottom excess. That's good, but I'm not excited about the fact that we haven't been able to get outside of this smaller micro bracket. So it's like we have a bracket inside of a bracket. What does that mean? It means that Bitcoin is primed for a move 
we're looking for some opportunity to break out of this. So I'm, you know, if I can get above 37,200, that's a spot that I'd look. I actually want to see more buying coming in, given from where we've come. So all these sellers back here are still in control. They were reassessed here. We don't have anything like that to the buy side, although we do have this buying excess. So looking for follow through buyers to push out of here and challenge the top of this bracket. It's going to be watching very carefully this opening range into the next week. Some key references to watch 34,760, 34,200. That is, that's the spot. We want to be above that area, about 500 points wide in Bitcoin in the coming week. Close right below that. We want to see it get above that and hold on any ads. Again, that's going to likely keep you early in the trade. So you use a really tight risk. We want to see some momentum and tempo pushing away from here. Again, unfortunately, at this point, the only target that we have higher is really the top of this prior bracket. We need to get above 42,000 before we can start thinking about higher prices beyond that. Okay, that's it for futures, a couple equities, and then we'll wrap up here. We were talking about Apple last week looking to make all-time highs. They got them done on the close of the week. Apple is super strong. You know, after they came back to the yearly open, one time framing higher, challenge this low volume node, pause right here at this high volume node as expected, closed above that. Now, in terms of expectations next is watch for them to potentially balance and fail just for a little bit around this high. That can help the equities balance as well, but we still have quite a, we have a couple of weeks out before Apple reports earnings. They're going to be moving to the upside anticipation with that most likely, but there's a lot of poor structure here. On Apple, if you get any attractive quick flushes, they're likely something to buy leading into that earnings. Last week, we highlighted this inside week in Tesla looking for moves. They opened, pushed above that, and then quickly came back below that. That told you, who, no dice. Look where they ran. They ran all the way back to this high volume node and bounced. Okay, that held, now we've got 660. That's the pivot, we get above that. Then we're looking for 691. So $30 opportunity there, of 6091. Then we go back to 721 and on to the races. So watch that. If we can't hold 660, if we really can't hold 620, then we open to retest the yearly lows. My poor buddy Baba, struggling like a lot of other Chinese stocks. Last week we talked about this 226, wanted to see higher prices we want to see a push higher test and then roll. Instead, they just immediately sold off. So no opportunity to add or buy. Um, and we're back to the spot. We need to get back above 212 before I'd be interested. So we'll have to see. It's possible they can come up to test and roll back over. If they can get above this, then I like it for a move back to 226. And last but not least, FCX. Also, inside week, this last week, we were looking for new weekly highs. You know, again, same scenario for a push higher. They also sold off, but note how they closed the week. Okay, we put in some really good weekly buying excess, but I need to see them back above 37.59. Thinking about 37.59, then I can lean on this buying excess to look for a push towards 41.42. Okay, so let's see how they can do. They can follow on the strength and the gap on Friday for a push higher. I do like this buying excess overall for the year. That still represents a higher low. However, it's a lower low than we had a couple weeks ago. So a little, not quite as tasty as we've had before. That's why I want to see more buying coming in before I want to dip my toes in. This week in our profile trading development pathway, our team's going to look at using profile statistics to set reasonable auction expectations. This is the focus of module nine. You know, this was something that really unlocked a lot for me was to think in terms of measurable auction statistics. You know, when you're first figuring out trading, you're coming to the market and every day seems like it has the same opportunity. And the reality is that they don't. Sometimes a lot of the move happens overnight. Sometimes based on the prior day, based on, you know, what's measured, you can set reasonable expectations. They're not guarantees, but they're reasonable expectations. And that really helped me contextualize every day to see where the opportunity was or wasn't. I often hear traders talking about looking towards, you know, emotional development, psychological development. This really helped my psychology 
was just having reasonable expectations of the auction. Nothing's a guarantee in trading. We talk about that often, but in contrast to this idea that nothing is guaranteed, there are reasonable expectations and reasonable expectations can help the psychological battle that a lot of traders face. So if you've never thought about your trading in terms of measuring behavioral statistics and know how to do that in a meaningful way, I invite you to join with us through our pathway. You can take a, a one week trial and spend some time with our team, join them on the live calls, and we'll show you how to apply that as part of your approach to markets. You likely are, but if you're not, be sure to be following us on Twitter at Trade with Prof and also subscribe via YouTube. You can get our free email course, You Already Know How to Trade, which really tries to contextualize the fact that most of you know something that will help you be a better trader. It's just translating that into what am I looking at when I think about a tradable auction. As mentioned before, you can start with a free week of our group pathway and you'll get to see one of our 16 modules, which includes six hours of video sessions, daily plans, trade ideas, an anchor trade that is set up that you can use day in and day out that has edge. Looking how to put all this in context, interacting with the team. If you wanna just jump right into our pathway, you can always do that via our video on demand pathway and get access to all 16 modules all at once in a video on demand format, as well as spend a month with our team in this environment. If you need help or have questions, you can always reach out to us at team at tradeprofile.com or call and text us at this number. That's it for our weekly outlook for the week of July 11th, 2021. Again, earnings coming up, seasonality starting to favor sideways trade. We're seeing some increased volatility. Be nimble. We're still in summer trade, but there's a great opportunity out there you've got some defined risk and you know that prices to be paying attention to knowing that not every price is actionable or as relevant to the auction, which we hope we've demonstrated in this call. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Until then, trade well. <music>